Good morning, folks. We're starting with a terrific article and video clip from the European Southern Observatory. Don't want to spoil the article, so I've linked it for you below and recommend taking a peek. Other top article today discusses the tremendous subterranean water sources at Earth. For explanation of existence, remember the star water principle of water formation via solar wind interaction with rocks. Quickly using the UN disaster site to check in on that African weather we mentioned two of the last three days. The flooding is severe, displacing thousands. Top storm watch right now falls to the southwest Pacific. The system already killed three people in Vanuatu and is now heading south towards New Zealand. In the U.S., the system left only a few severe storms along the east coast last night, but now the low pressure is heading north, bringing the severe watch to Maine and up into Canada. The western drive on the northern lows is southward, and that's what's causing the brief cooldown in the Midwest. Lucky Europe. Two days in a row with a blocking high pressure system in white. The lows won't dare intrude onto land with him guarding the skies like that. Solar wind telemetry. A solar wind density shock followed by immediate speed ramp is a coronal hole stream from the ones that lit the quake watch when facing Earth a few days ago. The stream takes longer to arrive than the magnetic force, but when it did last night, managed to create a brief geomagnetic storm. The top story in space, however, was the near X-class solar flare came off the north departing limb and will not have a geo-effective CME, but it did create a brief ionization event in our upper atmosphere and it destabilized a plasma filament to the south of it, ripping away there. Sunspots? Fast grower departing to the right, meanwhile we'll lean on Solon once more to see that delta spot in the middle under major distress and weakening now. Pick it up, son. Also keep an eye on the incomer to the north. Coronal fields are dancing. Now let me officially introduce the Mobile Observatory Project. Campaign goes live Saturday. Your reception to the pre-launch so far has touched my heart, guys. Let's take this up a notch. After years of bringing the news, literally every day, the next logical step is to do it from the road, meet all of you, and upgrade our monitoring capabilities. We want to add scientific devices, sky-watching capabilities, and get around the country to see all of you. We bought a sturdy used RV and want to put your name on it. Pledge $50 and we'll do just that. Put you on the vehicle. Larger donations get larger sized names, and you can also sponsor specific scientific devices or the first year of the tour itself. We're hitting the road for a year, and hopefully longer. In addition to keeping up with our daily news and the new observation capabilities of the observatory, a few months after the end of this first year, expect the release of a full documentary detailing the tour experience, the science, the smiles, and the struggles. My family is ready to put everything on the line. We're going to do our research and bring you the news every day from all across the country. The question now is whether you're willing to support this project and make it the best mobile observatory it can be.